Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for uh, introducing me and, uh, um, and also for organizing this great, the great conference. Um, so today, um, I'm, I'm Murat Topuris. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at Repair Biotechnologies. And today, I will share with you our first-in-class approach that we've developed that could clear excess free cholesterol inside cells and reverse uh, cardiovascular and metabolic diseases. And for the purpose of my talk, I will only focus on the effects of our therapy on atherosclerosis. So cholesterol is, as you all know, is a critical component of all cell membranes. In fact, it is also used for the, for the synthesis of bile salts, vitamin D, and of course, um, steroids. Now, about 80% of our daily requirement for cholesterol is actually synthesized by our liver. And the remaining 20% comes from our diet. Um, now, free cholesterol is actually very toxic. Even a little bit of it is toxic. So our bodies either incorporate this into cell membranes or they esterify it into cholesterol esters and store this into lipid droplets or, of course, they package it into lipoproteins and they transport it through the, to the, through the bloodstream. Um, let me just... Yeah. Here you have, of course, the liver. They package it into VLDL particles, which then, of course, mature to LDL particles. The LDL particle then can interact with the LDL receptor. The cell takes up the cholesterol that it needs, all for its uh, homeostatic mechanisms, and all excess cholesterol is then shipped out, and then it, it goes into HDL particles, which then bring this HDL back to the liver for processing. This is called forward and reverse cholesterol transport pathway. Of course, it's simplified, but it, this is the general gist of how this works. Now, the accumulation of toxic free cholesterol emerges when local excesses of cholesterol overwhelm these protective or safety mechanisms. And of course, this occurs with aging. It is accelerated in cardiovascular and metabolic diseases, and of course, in individuals that have you know, inborn mutations in cholesterol metabolism. So one might ask, you might ask, why haven't we targeted free cholesterol all this time? Well, the reason for this is that it's very hard to target free cholesterol, especially if you're using small molecules. For one, you have to target the excess free cholesterol and not the essential or homeostatic cholesterol that's necessary for cellular homeostasis. Secondly, cells do not have an active mechanism to degrade cholesterol because cholesterol is extremely energy expensive to produce. They're, they have to go through 27 different reactions to create one molecule of cholesterol. And so cells tend to hold on to this molecule. Now, however, our bodies do have proteins that if combined in the proper stoichiometry and orientation, they can actually target specifically the excess free cholesterol in cells. And at Repair Biotechnologies, that's what we've done. We've packaged the best combination of these proteins into a single optimized cholesterol-degrading platform fusion protein, which we refer to as CDP. And so what we do with CDP is we take the mRNA for CDP and we package it in these lipid nanoparticles that have a specific ligand which will interact with a specific receptor that's almost exclusively expressed on hepatocytes. Upon entry into the cell and maturation in the endosome, the mRNA is released and the protein will be expressed. Now, once expressed, there's a robust expression. This fusion protein will break down any form of cholesterol, including the very toxic 7-keto cholesterol, and it will reverse dysfunction and disease throughout the body, as I will show you. Now, atherosclerosis, this is the great killer. Everyone knows about this, but um, let's go through it. Now, atherosclerosis is the fatty atherosclerotic plaques that develop in our blood vessels, and as they grow, they impede the blood flow to, um, to vital organs, such as the heart. And this could, we could develop ischemic heart disease, vascular dementia, and numerous other conditions associated with aging. Now, more importantly, the rupture of unstable plaque, that's the greatest concern. An unstable plaque is large plaque that have a very thin fibrous cap, and they are very cholesterol rich, and they are prone to rupture. And when they do rupture, well, this could lead to heart attack and stroke, and will account for approximately 27% of human mortality. We know healthy life choices are, of course, very, very important, and lipid-lowering treatments such as statins, PCSK9 inhibitors, have done wonders for the treatment or for the management of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. However, these therapies 
only slow down the progression of plaque. They do not reliably reverse it. And given that in a meta-analysis, many analyses show that a 1% regression in atheroma volume is associated with a 20% reduction in the odds of developing major adverse cardiovascular events, this warrants the need to develop therapies that can rapidly and reliably reverse the buildup of harmful plaque. And that's what we have. So let's go through a few of our impressive results. Now, um, patients with homozygous family hypercholesterolemia, these patients have, uh, they lack functional LDL receptors, therefore they have very high LDLC cholesterol and they have accelerated atherosclerosis. The animal model for this uh, this condition in humans is the LDL receptor in all mice. I don't know if you guys could see this, but a single injection of our LMP CDP mRNA uh, therapy, just one dose, within 36 hours, you already see a clearing of the serum. And by 96 hours, this serum is identical to what we would see in a wild type mouse. Now, moving on to a more chronic experiment. Here, what we've done is that we've taken LDL receptor null mice and we've placed them on a high fat diet for 16 weeks to make them atherosclerotic. And then what we've done is that we've given them weekly injections of this LNP CDP mRNA over a period of six weeks at increasing doses. As you can see, there is an increase in CDP mRNA levels which correlate with the rise in protein levels. And this plateaus at 0.75 milligram per kilogram. Um, telling us that this is the saturating dose. And because the receptor that's involved in the, in, in the take-up of this LNP is not altered, um, this basically tells us that the uptake of the LNP was not affected by repeated or increasing uh, doses of our LNP. My, my patients with HOFH, and also the animal model of uh, this disease, LDL receptor null mice, have elevated alanine transaminase in their, in their serum. And this is basically the well-established canonical marker of uh, liver disease and pathology, okay? But a six-week treatment with our LNP CDP mRNA uh, to clear the excess free cholesterol produce, produce a significant reduction in ALT levels, almost a 40% reduction. And this was seen from 0.25 milligram per gram to 1.5 milligram per kilogram doses. This indicates that the treatment reduced liver pathology and likely augmented or improved liver function in this model of HOFH. But what was surprising here is that the salutary effects of CDP that we observed, we observed them even at the 0.25 milligram per kilogram dose. This, of course, warrants the need to do lower dose ranges to establish the linear range of dosing. And it also tells us that saturating doses that we had before are not necessary to have the salutary effect. Of course, this also speaks to how potent our therapy is. Next, we also put these mice on a treadmill. Yes, we put them on a treadmill at the end of the study. And the treadmill was put on an incline of 10 degrees and with a maximum speed of 14 meters per minute. Now, the time and distance were marked at the point at which the mice ceased to run for at least 10 seconds. And that was basically indicative of them being exhausted. Now, these mice are very, very fat. They're sedentary. They don't want to run. But if you can see here, the, uh, the, uh, the treated group, the LNP CDP mRNA group, outperformed the vehicle group at all of the doses. This suggests that uh, our therapy likely improves cardiovascular function and pot potentially metabolic function. Now, plaque. I've been preaching about plaque. Do we actually regress plaque? And in fact, we do. Here we have a cross-section of the aortic root that is stained with oil red O. This is, a neutral, this is a dye that stains all neutral lipids. And as you can see, the, the surface area of the plaque is clearly re reduced in the treated mice versus the vehicle-treated mice. And of course, this is the, graphic, the, the graphing of this data, again showing that 0.25 milligram per kilogram is way too high, we have to go lower, and that we don't need saturating doses of 0.75 milligram per kilogram to have an effect. Now moving on to the aorta, we did the same thing. Is it only localized to the aortic root or do we have a generalized reduction in plaque? And in fact, we do. Here is an unfast mounting of an aorta going from the iliac crest all the way to the aortic arch. What we've done is we've opened the, the blood vessel and we've stained them with oil red oil. And here we show that there is a reduction in the number of plaque in the treated group versus the vehicle treated group. Now, 
Um, how, how are we achieving this? We're trying to crack the mechanism of how this is happening. Well, it turns out that treatment with our LMP, CDP, mRNA upregulates key mediators in reverse cholesterol transport. And I'm only showing you a few, just for the purposes of, of brevity here. Um, there's, we have an upregulation of ABCA1 transporters, which are very, very important in the production of nascent HDL particles. HDL is also induced increased, as well as SRV1. This is the scavenger receptor that's on the surface of hepatocytes that tether the HDL particle when it's coming back to the liver and facilitate the transfer of cholesterol into the hepatocyte. So all this uh, pr pr provides a more efficient delivery of cholesterol from peripheral tissues back to the liver. Now, switching gears a little bit for in, in terms of the immune system, um, infiltration of immune cells, particularly monocytes, into the plaque actually accelerates the progression of plaque. In fact, monocytosis, an upregulation of monocytes in the circulation, is correlated with an increase, a much more aggressive atherosclerotic plaque uh, progression. Here we see the opposite. When we treat our mice with um, our, our, uh, our, our drug, there is a reduction in the number of uh, CD68 positive macrophages. CD68 is a pan macrophage mar marker. Uh, also, I should also mention that when we look at the population of cells in the, in the spleen, the subpopulation of immune cells point to a more of an anti-inflammatory uh, population. Therefore, there's also reprogram of the immune system, the mechanism of which we do not know at this time. We also did RNA-seq on the livers of our mice, and we actually have about approximately 500 genes that are differentially regulated. And what we found is, again, a profound immuno, immuno, um, uh, immunomodulatory uh, genes that are being expressed, more anti-inflammatory, and also the promotion of hepatic lipid homeostasis. Here are some examples. Here, the IL-18 binding protein is upregulated. This IL-18 binding protein binds IL-18, which is known to be uh, associated with aggressive progression of atherosclerosis, thereby inhibiting this. Therefore, we would get less atherosclerosis. Uh, similarly, the, the, um, uh, the CL CXCL13 is also downregulated. The CXCL13 binding to its uh, receptor CCR5 has been known to be involved in the progression of atherosclerosis. That's downregulated. And there's this uh, really a peculiar protein called hemopexin. It has very high binding affinity to, to heme, but when it binds HDL, it promotes its anti-inflammatory as well as the function of HDL. And this is very upregulated in our samples that were, of course, treated, our mice that were treated with uh, CDP. Now, then, of course, there's ORM2. There's a recent Nature publication on this topic. Uh, ORM2 actually promotes hepatic lipid homeostasis. And if you give um, ORM2 uh, weekly injections in mice, it could actually reverse both MASH and atherosclerosis. Now, so what is happening? Um, so what we, feel, what we believe is that by reducing the free cholesterol in the liver, we are, uh, we are launching um, multiple different uh, mechanisms. One of them is we're increasing reverse cholesterol transport. We are decreasing serum-free cholesterol. We are also decreasing markers of inflammation. And we're also uh, decreasing pathogenic mechanisms that are very sort of very surprising. And we are currently trying to patent aspects of this. But all this leads to a slowing of the rate of uh, plaque progression and an increase in the rate of plaque regression, leading to more stable plaque and smaller plaque. Okay, so now we're, now we're, we're, we're um, planning our uh, non-human primate study, which is actually going to start on uh, September 14th. Um, we are partnering with the largest and most reputable um, non-human primate research organization in the United States. They have over 5,000 NHPs. And what we're doing right now is we've struck a deal with a, uh, a clinic in Miami Beach that you know, normally uh, treats patients. And we're going to use them, their clinic part-time to do MRI scanning and CT scanning for the presence of plaque in the carotid and coronary blood vessels of aged animals. If we can enroll uh, 10 animals into the study, then we will commence an efficacy slash safety study in non-human primates on the 14th of September. If we can't find any, any animals with atherosclerotic plaque, well, then we will um, place uh, a set number of animals on a high-fat diet over a 12-month period, and then, of course, 
conduct the efficacy study. Now, what is our strategy? I've been talking to you about homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. First off, uh, our therapy can treat both rare genetic forms of atherosclerosis as well as the common, more sporadic forms of atherosclerosis. Uh, but for us, uh, targeting an orphan indication provides a much easier regulatory path to the clinic. And therefore, we will first uh, set up a small clinical test, a clinical trial in a modest number of HOFH patients, which can, of course, lead to fast-track approval. After this, of course, we will expand our uh, indications to the more common HEFH patients. These are patients that have one allele mutated of the LDL receptor gene. But unlike HOFH, these patients are underdiagnosed. And the reason for this is that they don't have any external signs that they have problems with their LDL cholesterol. But they, uh, their diagnosis is very incidental. They have a heart attack in their mid-20s, and that's when they find out that they have HEFH. But this happens in 1 in 350 patients, which is quite common. 1 million patients in the United States. After this, we will go to the high-risk atherosclerosis patients. These number about 20 to 20, 10 to 20 million patients worldwide. These patients do not respond to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to statins, but they have very unstable plaque. That means that they could have a, heart, a rupture in the next 48 hours or the next 48 days. They, don't, they cannot wait for uh, a lipid-lowering therapy to work uh, slowly. They need a therapy such as ours. Now, none of this could have been possible without the great work of our team. I mean, um, our CEO, Reason, everyone knows uh, Reason, doesn't need any introductions, but he's a great person to work with. Our um, CMO, Chief Medical Officer, Bobby Khan, who's shepherded numerous, um, more than one, uh, uh, drugs through the FDA, and of course Bill Chairman is the co-founder of, uh, with reason, of Repair Biotechnologies. Um, and of course this is our team in Syracuse. Uh, we're a small but very potent team and we get the work done. Um, now in terms of our advisory board, we have of course Richard Honkin, who's a personal friend of mine, um, and he's the original inventor of the CDP technology. And uh, Graham Pollock is the, uh, the immunology expert that we always um, ask advice from. Now, we've also added two prominent cardiologists to our advisory board, that being Ronald Carlsberg, who's based in UCLA, and his son, Daniel, Daniel Carlsberg, and, at NYU. Um, and uh, they're the dynamic duo. Uh, they are also with us on our mission that the FDA, as well as all the new ter therapies that are being developed, must focus on real endpoints of disease, such as plaque regression, rather than the surrogate metrics in the, in the serum. Thank you. Thank you very much for a uh, very interesting talk. Um, we have time for maybe one quick question. One quick question. Every 18 minutes. Do you plan on targeting the effect on lipoprotein little a? Uh, we haven't seen the effect yet, but um, we should test it. Uh, as you know, lipoprotein uh, in, is, not, is not present in mice. Uh, but we will test how that, that is, is modulated. And, uh, like those questions, how about triglycerides? Oh, which one? Tri triglycerides. Oh, yes. You know, I didn't, I didn't present that data, but triglycerides yeah. actually drop uh, very, very quickly. This, you know, serum uh, colors come with high triglycerides. Yes, so the serum, uh, the triglyceride drop precipitously, and they stay down at every dose. Again, telling us that the 0.25 milligram per gram is just too high. We have to go to lower doses, and that's a good thing. Going to low doses with the FDA is a very, very good thing because there's chance of less off-target effects. But we have no off-target effects even past the 0.75 milligram per kilogram, so we're very pleased with that. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you very much, and thank thanks you. also for oh. supporting the conference. Oh. Of course, thank you. <laughs>